I am happy. I am well. I'm doing great. So I don't want no negativity comments on this video. I had enough negativities on why I left St. Croix to come to Florida because oh I shall never leave. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Nessa Reality. For those who are new, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a family and friends. I'll be doing a video dated I did a year ago why I left in Croyos, U.S. Virgin Islands, Florida. This is not a part two. This is just an update. I'm gonna tell you my experience of all living in Florida, of living here, going for four years. I never really shared this with you. I moved here November the 28th, 2017. Fly here in Florida. The next day was the 29th was my son's birthday. I saw my experience of where I was living. I was kind of scared. Don't get me wrong. I was living on my own, especially living in America. I have been in America. America already but never live in America. This is not really my first time living in Florida. This is my second time living in Florida but this is actually the move of living in Florida. Before all of this I did my best in of finding a part, saving enough money, making sure that I could pay for my bill. Now one, before you move to the state make sure you got a reasonable apartment. Two, make sure that you have shopping centers around you because transportation is not easy. You have to catch a bus or you can catch a lift and you have to catch Uber or especially you have family and friends. One thing I'm not saying I regret. I don't have family and friends here. I left St. Croix on my own with my two kids. I left. There was comments I made on that video that I did not like. And I'm going to address it to you guys. I left there for a numerous reason. I left because of the hurricane. I left because I need medical assistance for my daughter. And I left because I couldn't deal with my daughter's father. And I was not happy. I was stressed. I was depressed. And I was really, really depressed real bad. Because I was looking for help. What I needed medical assistance for my daughter. I'm addressing that to you guys out there. Then I came here. I already had my apartment. I didn't have a job yet, but I saved my money. In that month of time, I had rent to pay. I had water to pay. I had internet. I needed internet to look for uh, assistance, especially med care, um, food stamp. So I had rent to pay. I had water to pay. I had electricity to pay. I had internet to pay for. And I had to go in the laundry facility to wash clothes. And my phone bill. So that was like six bills. No, you're fine running so I started to look for a job I think it was either December or January I got calls but nobody didn't want to hire me so I went and looked for a job in Publix one of my co-worker from back home who lives in the same city her mother told me that I should apply for Publix oh Publix is a great company to work so I went and applied for it never called me so one of my best friends my sister for a different mother but no she's not my blood sister but she's like my, my sister she told me go and check it out see what their status and stuff like that. So I went and checked it out. Application was not pulled up because I needed availability. Oh well, I didn't know. So I did my availability five to close. I didn't like it. It was tiring. But I had to do it. I think it was after I got the job, my the people called for my daughter Head Start. She could not go elementary because of her age. So she had to be five by September 1st. Her birthday was after September 1st. So there was no space in Head Start. So when you know I got a phone call, they tell me that, oh, your daughter could go Head Start. So what happened, which I didn't know, that a little Asian boy went back to China. And that's how my daughter get in. So at that time she was going to Head Start. I was working in the night. She go to school like 7.30 till 1.30 or so. And then I go work by 5 to 12. Now, this is where the struggling happened. There was no bus to pick her up to go to school. Every morning I had to catch either Lyft or Uber to go and drop her to school. There was bus but you had to wake up early in the morning to walk a good distance to catch a bus 75 which I didn't know about bus. So every morning I catch Uber and Lyft. Every afternoon I catch Uber and Lyft. So the total I paid for Uber and Lyft before I got my car. What? That's how much I spent on Uber and Lyft and bus transit. That was a lot. Now the only time I use Uber Uber and Lyft, I have to do grocery and I have to drop my daughter to school. Then I started to learn about bus transit. So I don't use the Uber and Lyft anymore unless I have appointments or something like that. That was the struggle part. If you don't have transportation, you are a bummer. And that was like the hard part. Of 2018, it's gonna be three years since I got my car, I got a car. And that's when the bills started to kick in. So I had to pay a car insurance and I had to pay car notes. So that's like eight bills right there. That's when the, the bills started kicking in. That's when I had to start to work and everything like that. When you move into the state, if you don't have a family and you don't have a good friend, you're a bummer. Thank God I had my son who was what, 18 years old and my daughter was five. 
So he was helping babysitting her while I'm at work, making sure she go to sleep, she done be fed, she done be bathed, and everything. I used to have to walk to go to work. It was like a 10 minutes walk to go to work. Then I didn't have no ride. And I'm a person, I don't beg people for ride. I walk, go home after 12 in the night with my ear pods on, listen to Bible, or talking to my mother on the phone. Have a pocket knife or have a pepper spray in my pocket so nobody don't bother me. Like I said, live in the States. There's a pros and a cons. If you don't have your transportation, you're bummers. If you don't have a job, you're bummers. If you're gonna use all your funds, you're bummers. So it's time to go and look for a job because your funds are done. So I got the job working in Publix, like I said, and my daughter got into school, which is great. Now, things kind of was falling apart, bills kicking in, you need help. And my son, it was hard for him to find a job, but he got like a, the Department of Labor and stuff like that. There were sacrifices that I had to make and sacrifices he had to make because I had to work according to my daughter's school schedule. So she started like in 2018, school started, she went to kindergarten. When I changed my availability, I had to change my hours so she went to after school program that's when they cut my hours and you know when you cut your hours you can't pay for your bills you're struggling it really got to my mental health that is like what am i going to do i don't want to go back home there's nothing to go back home with because like i said i left because i needed medical assistance for my daughter and I'm getting good medical assistance for her. Certain things I had to learn from people, certain things I had to listen, Google, pick people mouth, just they ain't know about. Up to this day, I still don't know a lot of things, but I'm learning as I go. I got my car, I was good. They ain't had to take no more Lyft and Uber. They ain't had to take no more buses. They ain't had to worry about taking Uber and Lyft to go grocery shopping because I used to do a month grocery shopping. I ain't going back Walmart again. Time as go by, it started to get a little worse. You get your money for rent, but you didn't know how to pay for other stuff and I had to do a side hustle thing. Instant Card is a app and a shopper where you pick up customer shopping in public and you deliver it. I was making good money. Pay my bills, I was straight. I had no problem. I had to use my card, go shopping, drop them off. I take my kids with me. I didn't know how to use a GPS on my phone. So they were my company. I was making good money. And um, I do DoorDash. I do post me. Pay my bills. The side hustle. I did great. Everything like that. Everything was going good. Since Publix had cut my hours, my son was helping me and everything was going just fine. Then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. Finding out I was doing instant card, they wanted to give me more hours. When you were supposed to give me more hours, you didn't give me hours. And now I'm doing something else, you want to give me hours. At the time that they had cut my hours, I would kind of gain like, I don't know what I'm going to pay for this, what I'm going to do, and everything like that. But then they were giving me hours and I wasn't doing instant card that much. So that kind of messed me up. But when I'm off, I used to do instant card from 8 to 4. So my son would call me. As years go by, they still were giving me less hours and that's when I had to go and get another second job. Publix and McDonald's at the same time. But like I said, because of this COVID, I had to leave McDonald's because my daughter was doing visual. I don't have nobody to watch her except my son. At this present moment, my experience of 2017, it had a little tiny moment. In 2018, it had the biggest moment. I mostly been struggling in 2018. 2019, I was good because I had my second job. 2020 of the COVID till now, I've been doing pretty okay. I moved to this new apartment. I'm saving more than I was with my old apartment. Because with my old apartment, I was spending more. With this one, I'm not really spending much. My advice to everyone out there who decided to leave from the Caribbean to come to the States, do your research. Check out the area first, which I didn't check out the area, but I check out the medical assistance for my daughter. Come up here, check it out, see if you like it. Did I make a mistake to move up here? No, I didn't. It's a quiet, it's a nice area, nice city actually. The food is not expensive, it's cheap, but the rent is expensive. Finding a job is hard. I feel like if you find a job, you must have experience, so they say. And if you don't have experience, they're not gonna hire you. And that's the downfall. And I have been working in food industry. 17 years, I have experience in food industry. Yes, I'm tired of it, really tired of it. I wanna do something else, but I don't have that much experience. Just food industry, because I've been working McDonald's back home. Then I went to Publix, then I went to McDonald's again, and was affording to go back to work in a fast food restaurant. And I do need a new experience 
experience i'm not getting younger i'm getting older i feel like i need to do something else but like i said do your research google it know what you're getting to especially if you don't have family and friends you gotta tough it out another thing if you're gonna live with your family and friends don't be too comfortable in the place when you get here in, in the state you're gonna look for government benefits and you're gonna look for a job you save your money you're gonna look for an apartment get out because you're gonna be a burden to your family and friends because when they say they're not gonna tell you get out they you're gonna see the swing moves time for you to go i didn't came up here to live with anybody i came on my own i learned my lesson from years ago living with somebody and it wasn't working out and i was a burden to them i went back home not me again i learned from that right now do i have friends here no i don't have friends i'm still am i looking for any friends not really i'm not really looking for any friends if they come they come am i dating anyone no am i seeing anyone no so it just mostly work my kids taking them out and just stay in my house and quarantine because it's covid i just i don't like to go out and one thing we're having a car is a good thing to have a car it takes you anywhere you don't have to depend on transportation out there you don't have to spend any money on a transportation but otherwise as for my, my daughter she's doing well she's doing better i didn't have to deal with back home where i used to get medical assistance i had to go to puerto rico puerto rico had their issues with hurricane maria and irma I don't know how they're doing over there but to be honest there was a lot of things that they was not doing for her um she was supposed to wear glasses that they, they didn't do anything about that never check her eyes she was going dentist but not frequently up here like every six months because back home is like you gotta wait for appointment or they full and it was hard for she to gain an appointment for dentist every three months go and see the doctor for her hematologist every year she do a well child checkup she's doing much better and do i regret coming here no but I'm not having friends and I'm not having family up here it gets sad it gets lonely I have my kids am I happy now yes I am happy I am not depressed not stressed this is 2021 yes we're dealing with COVID still and I try not to let things bother me my son he's working McDonald's don't really like it that much last thing I update with Publix I no longer work in the deli I've been doing instant card I do it now and then for in shopper instant card for Publix I'm working customer service as a cashier so am I happy chilling about it sort of but it's time for me to just leave i've been working for public for three years that's a long time and it's gonna be four years since i've been living here so otherwise my daughter's doing good in school her health is fine thank god for that my son is doing great i'm doing great for those who worrying about me who don't reach out to me who don't can't text me and say hi for you guys to know i am doing great i am happy i don't have to be stressed no drama no problems no headaches I am doing great. I might not be where I want to be as doing what I need to do, but I am great. Would I visit St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands? I want to because of this COVID and you have to take the vaccine, which I'm not sure about that yet. Fine, I am blessed. I'm just doing great. I'm happy. And for the friends that are back home, you don't call me, you don't text me. It's okay. I still love you. I still pray for you. You know, like everybody say, everybody's busy. Everybody have a life to live. What I could do, what I could say, that's your choice, not my choice. I pray everything goes well everybody back home with my friends which i don't really have much friends not that i'm not social media is that i don't really have much friends and the friends that i count on they're not here for me right now i only talk to like four people and four people live in the states but i have no friends who can't even say hi how are you doing how's everything how's your kids don't have that but it's okay though it's okay because i am happy i'm a black woman with two kids i don't need no drama i don't need no problem i don't need no headache I don't need anything because I am happy. I put God first, I put my kids second, and I put myself third. But in the long run, I am happy. I am well. I'm doing great. So I don't want no negativity comments on this video. I had enough negativities on why I left St. Croix to come to Florida because, oh, I shall never leave. I don't care what you guys say. This is my life. This is what makes me happy. This is what I am proud of. Yes, I miss the Caribbean. Anything back home. It's like mostly work home. That's it. But even though I'm doing the same thing, but I'm out there freely i could do whatever i want to do i don't have to worry about this person or that person or whatever it was too much drama to be back home and i just want to be happy i wish i could scream because at the end of the day what made me happy 
what makes my kids happy. As long as I have the good Lord on my side, I am free and happy. And he's always on my side. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell to get more videos. Bye.